Hey folks, welcome to John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. We're back up in northern Minnesota chasing muskies. Fleet Farm presents John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. Fleet Farm, the ultimate fishing headquarters. Just a big, beautiful fish. Oh, is that awesome. Holy moly! Oh, 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 oh my god. It's a huge fish! It's a huge fish! This is amazing. What do you got? Oh awesome. my gosh. Yes, folks, mid-September is finally here. I think today is September the 15th, and you have been waiting for cooler water temps. We're gonna musky fish again. We're in uh, the Longville, Minnesota area, and you like water temps in the low to mid-60s. Oh, yes, I do. After a long summer of real hot temps, this is especially inviting, but from a standpoint of being able to catch fish, I just think it's a good time of year as well. You generally have shallow movements this time of the year when you get the first cool down, and uh, just a few weeks ago, we were in the mid-70s, and now we're about 64, and I expect it to stay about there. It's gonna be pretty steady, but it should be a real good time, John. We should be able to find some fish shallow. What I like too, folks, is you know you can really throw any musky bait in your tackle box this time of year, but also the water is cool enough to put a sucker out, and, and that ups your odds. Yeah, it, it is a good thing to try. I generally say the first good solid cold front, once you're in that 60 degree range, that's a good time to start trying a live bait. And we'll probably drag one of those around today. So you got that as an extra. I always tell people from an efficiency standpoint this time of year though, if you've got a really good lure bite going on, if you, you see a wind, if they're chasing bucktails or whatever, get that sucker out of the water and just cover more water. That's, that's the problem with the live bait. It is a slower presentation. So you gotta be thinking too where the odds are. Okay, well Blake's mad at you because she wanted to go musky fishing. She's at home, but we got a great replacement for her. We do. We got we do. Mike you Kitts, the yeah, college of musky slayers he here. <laughs> and of course our old buddy Rusty from Rusty's Up North Realty, a great musky fisherman in his own right. So we'll catch something? Oh yeah, yeah. We really, we just don't have room for Blake. With well, all the I know. <laughs> and, and, and we don't have a show for Saturday, so these guys got to produce. They, yeah. All right? Definitely all right. produce. Hey folks, we'll show you more about what we're using and how we're using it. All of that coming up right after this. On the water every second counts. So when there's a fish at three o'clock, be right on time with Mega 360 Imaging. Every sweep of our newest technology offers 125 feet of absolute clarity all around your boat. So you can see fish and every detail in every direction. With a clearer picture of what's below, you can catch fish like clockwork. Mega 360 Imaging, only from Humminbird. What's the difference between a good net and a great net? Simple, it's all in the features. Fortis Nets by Clam Outdoors are tough, safe on fish, easy to use, and a telescoping handle. Learn more about Fortis Nets at clamoutdoors.com. It's time to save big during the Yamaha Let's Ride sales event with as low as 2.99% APR for 36 months, plus amazing customer cash offers. So see your local Yamaha dealer today for huge savings. Then, let's ride. Welcome back, folks. As I mentioned at the top of the program, back for muskies up in Longville, Minnesota. Today, September the 15th, and the neat thing is, as Pete talked about at the top, we can use any bait we want, service bait, bucktails, jerk baits, whatever. But uh, also putting out a sucker, Pete, and uh, I guess the one question I have, is it weeds or rocks when you, when you get into the middle of September? 
I would say, of course, depending on the body of water, John, but uh, I'd lean more towards uh, rocks and sand in a lot of cases this time of year. Uh, but weeds can definitely be a factor too, especially on brighter days. So it's just one of those things you got to pattern just like the lure types. <laughs> hey, the first bite of the day is a scrawny northern pike. A northern pike on a jerk master. Well, Gosh, that wasn't exactly what I had in mind. No, yeah. but I always ask you that question and a lot of folks might not know the answer. When you see smaller pike on the musky spots, not a good sign, Pete? Generally not. I, you know, the one we want to catch could probably eat that. So, right. If they're bigger pike, I don't worry about it at all. I've uh, I've caught a big pike and a nice musky right after it before, but usually these guys roaming around on prime structure means uh, the muskies aren't all that active. Oh, he's coming. He's coming. No, he's not that nice. Yeah. Uh oh. Oh, there was somebody just, a, a fish just grabbed the sucker, folks. The fish came in on Rusty's bait. It's probably the same one, Pete? I would guess so. Yeah. yeah. So that's the nice thing, folks, throwing the artificial baits, running the sucker. And what Rusty's doing right now is backing them up over the top of the sucker. And, Pete, you want that fish going away or right yep. below you? Yeah. Right? Okay, yeah, uh, shut her down. Shut Let's... her down there, Swede. This is my favorite part of the well, fall, folks. come on, move away. Oh, is he still there? Well, he's coming up. Okay. Which we don't want him to do. Okay. Oh! Hey, oh! What do you got? I don't know, it don't feel very big, John. Well, let's see here. I we got another, pike uh, another northern pike. pike a -rooney. Actually, I don't, what are your, what's your deal here in Minnesota on keeping pike? You know, we can have 10 pike under 22 inches now, John. Oh, so that that one right there would be... That would be a keeper if you wanted to you know, have dinner. And you know, the way I clean them, you get five sides off. You get off five that. sides if yeah. you clean them right. That's the right way to do it. <laughs> and you know, hold them up. Now, that's that, the that, stupidest that thing I've <laughs> ever heard of, by the way. No, Folks no, you, show how you get five sides off a of pike there, sweet. What a ridiculous if you can grab them. Yeah. Right yeah. Thing. Oh, I can okay. count the two sides. <laughs> now, when you clean them, show the folks how you get five sides. <laughs> if I can get a hold of them. You can't get them. There you go. All right. Now, hold them out in front of you. Now, show the folks how you clean them and you get five sides. So you cut it here, and you go down, and you come out of the dorsal fin. There's side one. Okay. Then you go in here, come down, take that off, that's side two. Right. Take the tail piece of side three. This side is side four, the tail piece is side five. And seriously, aren't they as good to eat as any fish around? They're, they're, the flavor's incredible. I, I agree with you. You just saw one? Yeah. Yeah, about a 38. Hit that Ryan, puppy. Ryan was seeing it on the... Oh, seriously? On the side imaging, yeah. Yeah, we were <laughs> commiserating about the electronics, literally saw it on there, and then I raised it. Oh, we missed that musky. Now you got something on the lure. Yeah, I hope I this do is have a musky. On the lure. Let's see what we got coming it's in here. It's a little heavier fish. It's acting way more like a pike than a than a musky. Yeah. Well, let's see what we That's got. That's because here. it is a pike. Ooh, oh, that was that a was nice a pike. pike, though. Yeah. That was over 30 inches long. Yeah, it's nice pike. Well, I don't know how he got off the jerk master. The whole thing was down his throat. It looked like I couldn't even see the head of the bait. Well, you know, now those you don't mind seeing on a musky spot. A, a no, pike that no, way. actually, yeah, a bigger fish like that, I don't, I don't worry about that. That could be a good sign. It's now time to announce this week's winners of the Fleet Farm John Gillespie's Waters and Woods 2020 Fishing Contest. This week's first winner is Tom Jonas of Brownsville, Wisconsin, caught this 50-inch muskie on Fox Lake using a hot dog. Larry Johnson of Swano, Wisconsin, caught this 11-and-a-half-inch bluegill on three lakes using a nightcrawler. Mark Doggle of Germantown, Wisconsin, caught this 11-and-a-quarter-inch bluegill on Mendota using a Berkeley bait. Corey Prebeck of Two Rivers, Wisconsin, caught this 42-inch king salmon on Lake Michigan using a fly. And this week's first kid winner is Gavin Adeno of Appleton, Wisconsin, caught this 42-and-a-half-inch king salmon on Lake Michigan using a spoon. And Tristan Perron of Monticello, Minnesota, caught this 41-inch tiger muskie on Sand Lake using a spinnerbait. Each week, I shop online at FleetFarm.com to check out the latest deals. Check out what I found this week. 
25% off on the 6-inch Rapala fish and fillet knife with sharpener and sheath on sale for $14.99. And 15% off the Acme Little Cleos on sale starting at $2.96. Well, buddy, kind of a tough afternoon. We had the one bite on the sucker. Didn't we had land nice bite on the sucker. Couple little pike, and then we had motor problems. Motor problems. We don't know what happened. We're going to find out. So we are bow mounting about two <laughs> miles across the lake right now to put the boat on the trailer. Yep, we got a we got moose roast waiting for us at home, so we're gonna have to go as fast as we can. Well, this is as fast as we can go, <laughs> but we will fish tomorrow. We will fish tomorrow. The skies we were fishing Leech Lake in Longville, Minnesota, an eight and a half hour drive from Milwaukee, nine and a half hours from Chicago, and three hours from Minneapolis. The Kalen's Google Eye Jig features a built-in glass rattle that creates a deadly combination of sight and sound. Its shockwave rattle system has been designed to call fish in. The lifelike rattle reflects the light and adds a dimension like no other. Available in two styles and 13 colors. It's hard to put our adventures on hold, but now is the perfect time to prepare for their return. Amsoil has your back with fast, free shipping and ordering has never been easier. Just look up your vehicle, select your product, add an oil change to your cart and check out. Spend $100 on Amsoil products and shipping is on us. Order now at Amsoil.com. I'll tell you what folks, when it gets hot like this, about 88 degrees and, and not much of a breeze and you've been out in the boat all day, there is one thing that you can do if you're smart and you have one in your boat and it's called a Johnson Pump Washdown Kit. It not only can clean your boat, but it can also cool down your guests. Watch. Do it again. There you go. Get that cub sign and keep going. There you go. Hey. Well, there now, we go. That is refreshing, though, isn't it? That feels good. And that really is great for cleaning your boat. We use live bait in here, you know, a lot. Yeah. And uh, you get crawler stuff all around. It just gets it off like crazy. But now that is good for taking a shower in the boat, too. It is, apparently. Well, folks, day two up in Longville, Minnesota. We had some tough luck yesterday, got our motor fixed, and we're good to go today. I'll tell you what, Pete, you got kind of a hazy sky, a relatively light wind. Your thoughts on the weather? Well, I don't know. We've been out here a little bit, John. Uh, haven't seen anything yet, but overall, uh, the wind's supposed to fluctuate on and off. It's supposed to be warm today. I don't necessarily like the warmth, but sometime during the course of the day today, I think the fish are going to turn on. I'm afraid it's one of those deals that's going to kind of be a window thing, though, you know. Hey, <laughs> I was hoping for a muskie hit there, Pete. What do I have? You have a northern pike. Yeah, and on a big old spoon. Now, is there a reason you had me throwing this thing? Yeah, yeah, because we we know we have some fish, but they appear to be extremely negative. So you're like really trying about anything, and that's something I figured they hadn't seen. Big flashy spoon. Yeah, how long have we been going here now? Oh, about three hours. We've seen three fish, but unbelievably lazy. The last one literally would not come up off the sand. I would have never even known he was there uh, if it wasn't for the flat water now. Well, you know what? You never know when Mr. Muskie's going to make your day. No, you don't know that. I hope it's today. You never do know. <laughs> oh, Just let it sit still. Oh, oh. He made a little move on it, didn't he, Rusty? Yeah. That's a big fish. That yeah, was a was. big fish. Was he coming yeah. in hard? Yeah, I kind of thought I was going to get him to do it. I just, I don't know. Well, you know, you get fall days like this, you know, when it's calm. Yeah. And you don't see a lot of fish during the day. This can be the prime time this last hour and a half before dark. Right? Yeah, it can be, John. Ooh, that's too bad. That was a nice one. That was that over was 50. Big fish, that one. Yeah. yeah. All right, we just had a follow. Maybe he picked up the sucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, did he, Pete? Start look, that motor. Start go, that go, motor. Go, go backwards. Go, go, go. Go backwards. We want to get over the top of that fish. All right, and he was a nice one that came in on the bait, yeah. huh? Yeah. All right, all right. Hurry up, sweet. Hurry, Hurry up. up, sweet. Hurry, up. Hurry. 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 Ooh, the bobber's down. The bobber's down. Let's get this fish, folks. Let's get this fish. Okay, we good, need him. Good, we need him. Good, good, good. Okay, now watch the hook set, the most exciting part of musky fishing. He's got to have him moving away. I think he's moving, moving away. Keep 
Yes, 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 yes. Oh my gosh, it's a big fish. It's a big fish. It's a big fish, Pete. It's a big fish, Pete. Don't lose him, Pete. Don't lose him, I'll buddy. Try not Do not well. lose him, man. Do not lose this fish. We need him badly. We need him badly. Okay, here he comes. Okay, see, where is he? Where is hang he? Hang on, hang on. Where is he? Is He's he a good one, Pete? Right. I, I just saw the side. Uh, about a 45. All right, all right. Okay. Oh, Ooh, boy, this thing is fighting good. Yeah. He nice is staying. Fish. Oh, there he is. There he is. That is a beautiful musky, Pete. Oh, my gosh. It's a gorgeous musky, Pete. <laughs> all right, get him in that clam as soon as you can. We need him in that clam. Dandy. We need him in that clam. All right, sweet, be ready, buddy. We need him in that clam. We do. We he do. doesn't. He doesn't want to be in that clam. Oh. Well, I do. I, mean, I want him in that clam. Here he is. Here he is. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay, Pete. I think he's a. Uh, wow. That he is, a, is a. He is a fighter. That is a fighting fish. And this is the one I raised on the jerk master. Okay. All right. Here he comes. Oh, please. We need this fish, folks. We need this fish. Oh, Get is he hooked sweet. perfectly? He is hooked perfectly. He's not quite ready yet. Okay. Come on, sweet. There Get we go. That fish in there. Yeah, there you go. Hey, <laughs> yeah. hey, Pete. I'll tell you what. That we Good we job, a long time for that bite, Woo. didn't we, buddy? Yeah, you know, it's one of those days. We were just talking a little earlier. Let's turn the salt board off. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's been, everything's been tough. We talked about motor trouble and every follow's been real, real lazy. But that's why you drag that, that sucker around once in a while, you know. And again, you know, we get so many questions about when do you start using them and you like the low 60 degree water temps, right? Yeah, I always like to say the first good cold front when you get in that 60 degree range, John. And then when it's just when it's tough like this, if you see a pattern like this, I said yesterday, you know, this time of the year, if they're really going on lures, get rid of them, cover water. But today we're going real slow, trying to cast both ways. So, all right, let's go start from the beginning here. We're fishing a weed edge and you had that, we've been going a long time on this weed edge. You had that fish come on, on one of your baits. Yeah, I came on the Livingston Jerk Master, and like the other ones, we've, we've seen four today. Every one of them's been just barely moving. This one looked a little more active, so fortunately, and it was an interesting hit on the sucker, to be honest with you. I'm looking back there, and I would never be excited by this other than knowing that muskie was there, right? And I just saw that barber go, doop, doop. it looked like a crappie or a perch bite. Yeah. And I'm like, I wonder. And then all of a sudden, yeah. it just barely went down. Hey, we got to take a look at that hook set again. And you know, we talk about it all the time. Make sure that fish is moving away. Get on top of them if you can, right? And that hook set was awesome. Well, the whole idea, yeah, you want to be real quick and sharp. You know, you got to pull that, you got to break the rubber band, you got to pull those hooks out and into the fish. But the key is really knowing where it goes and there, where it's going, and that backing up is real effective. That one was slow. It was hard right after Rusty yeah. stopped for me to tell, but it, it definitely scared it away. So I knew I had the right angle. Give him a hug, Rusty, will you? <laughs> come on, no, come on. There you go, guys. This is a beautiful fish to look at, too. Hey, Pete, you know what I really love is that clam colossus net that you helped design. That mesh in there is awesome. Hooks just don't get stuck in it, do they? That's one of the biggest things, John. You don't want to wipe slime off. That's extremely important, but it's amazing. And this is especially a factor in late fall, but when the fish like to roll, if you've got mesh that a hook can actually stick into, worse yet, past the barb. They can literally roll themselves up and just get in a horrible mess and you're in a situation where you were li literally the only way to safely release the fish is to cut the mesh yeah. itself. It's so much better on the fish and I haven't had any issues at all this year with, uh, with the hooks going through. Well, it good does, job, it, yeah, good job designing it and I, I know you spent a lot of time working on that mesh. Let's see the fish. Yeah. I want to see the muskie. Yeah, that's... I haven't seen one in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen them, they've just been sitting there looking oh, at that's me. A, you know, that's a beautiful fish. And yeah. I'll tell you what, folks, that fish fought its hard out. Yeah. Didn't he fight his heart out? He really did. Yeah, just a gorgeous, gorgeous muskie. Really, really yep. did. That's the good and I'm thing. I'm excited. Rusty's trying to get a picture. That's why he pointed that way. Well, beautiful All job right. there, buddy. Let me Congratulations. Get him back that's here. awesome. All right. 
See you later there, girl. Yeah, all right. Hey, Pete, nicely done, buddy. And, and we got terrible conditions. You hate calm water on Leech Lake. And man, we needed that fish for our own psyche. Yeah, yeah, that helps the psyche too. But uh, it's, it's interesting. One of the fish today was really big, but they've all been real low and slow like yeah. that. So the good news is, you know, that's always a better sign. You know, when you're suffering through it, it's hard to get excited, but you know, maybe there'll be a good window at the end of the day. We might get a little wind. When it stays tough a long time, that can actually be good news. Breaking news from Fleet Farm. Check out our new expanded ad for even more deals, more savings in store and online at fleetfarm.com. And the new Rapala Rap V Blade Lures are on sale for $7.99. The new Rapala Rap V Blade Lure on sale for $7.99. Well, buddy, it's getting near the end of our musky day, but uh, I want to congratulate you. You guided your buddy to one of the biggest bears that's going to be shot in Minnesota this year, right? Yeah, I'm sure it'll be in the top 10, John. How big was it? It dressed out at 4'11". That's incredible. And, and you've got great bear hunting up here, but... Uh, let's explain to the folks this first video shot that we're looking at is your big bear scare and another bear off the bait pile? Yeah, I had my trail camera set on video and there was two other bears trying to come in and he jumped up and put the run on them. And we nicknamed this bear Walking Tall because he was about three inches taller than a 55 gallon drum. Well, we're seeing him get hit right now and he runs off. He didn't run far, did he? He went about 70 yards and, and you know, bears traditionally don't bleed a lot. So it took about 35 minutes to actually find him. And he dressed out and weighed how much? 411 pounds. 411 pounds. Yep, that wow. was at the Lochter plant. Yep. That's incredible. And so folks still have uh, several weeks to come up and do some hunt. You know, and I think after the 60-day drying period, I believe that'll make the Boone and Crockett record book. Folks, each week we feature an Ask the Guide question, and today's question is from Brad Beneke. In the summer, when you have high, bright skies, that's not really good for musky fishing. Is it the same in the fall, or does the midday warmth help? It really does depend on water clarity to a certain extent for the summer months, but generally it is bad. And in fall, it can be a real good thing, especially on cooler nights. I will generally do better on days where it starts off cool and it's warming. And even on some of the gin clear lakes in, in, in late fall, that sun can be good. As long as you're fishing a little deeper, it actually seems to be a positive thing compared to a negative thing. And then especially in darker water, a lot of times at the edge of the day, at the end of the day, that sun and that warmth will pull some of the fish shallower and you can actually have a pretty good evening bite. So generally overall in fall, the heat is good. Thank you, Brad Beneke, for your question. For that, you will receive two coupons for Johnsonville Brat. The Kalen's Google Eye Swing Head features a wide base with a built-in glass rattle that puts off a lot of vibration and noise under the water. And the wide base allows it to not get snagged as much along the bottom. Check this out, three sizes and three colors. The first thing that we're gonna do today is attack panfish in the basin of a lake. Just gives it a little extra flavor or smell. Fishing jumbo perch in Devil's Lake, North Dakota. This is not too early to come out and catch walleyes, huh? It's never too early. This middle of May stuff for walleyes, it's cool. It's a night and day difference putting the bait mate on. This is ranked as one of the top smallmouth destinations in the world. And that bait mate does work, doesn't it? It does. Catch more fish all year long with Baitmate Fish Attractive. Check it out at baitmate.com. The new delicious Johnsonville sausage strips are now available. My dad and I love cooking them with our eggs in the morning, but there's also so many different ways you can cook the Johnsonville sausage strips.
recipes, go to SausageStrips.com. Folks, taking a little break, we haven't talked about this for a long time on the show, proper handling of muskies. And we're looking at some pictures right now where you can actually see blood underneath the skin of the muskies, and that is from being overstressed. Now, obviously, there's going to be some stress during the fight, but you can minimize the stress in the handling of the fish, right, Pete? When you hold them up for the camera, any extra time out of the water whatsoever is a bad thing. But what I am seeing in recent years is much more of this hemorrhaging underneath the skin. And it's much easier to see in the spotted strains, the Great Lake strain and the Leech Lake strain. But essentially it looks like blood. And in my years of dealing with heavily stressed fish, I. I found out that the ones that would barely swim away or, or look horrible, I, I would see that hemorrhaging starting in the tail area. When it works its way all the way up into the body and then eventually the fins, that's extreme stress. That's a fish that's most likely going to die. And one thing that's gone on in recent years is people want to know exactly how big their fish is. So there's way more in-boat measuring. There's way more actually of a tend to want to verify the exact length looking at a bump board or other measuring devices in the boat. That is just extra time and I think all of these things are adding up, but you want to minimize the time. You want to be aware certainly of that hemorrhaging when you're handling fish. If you see any of that hemorrhaging or blood spots on the fish, it should be all bets are off. You're done with pictures. You're done with everything. You want to get that fish back in the water. But it's a big topic we really need to be dealing with, especially now that we're learning so much about the delayed mortality aspect of it. Uh, oh, Pete, I'm getting too old for this. So, John, you haven't heard of Brian's Custom Steps? Oh, Pete, those are awesome. How can I get a set? Yeah, I love these big no-slip platforms, and they're made right here in Wisconsin. For more information on Brian's Custom Steps, call 920-315-0333. From cutting back to cleaning up, Fleet Farm has everything you need to get your yard ready for fall. Whether you're giving the lawn one last feed, showing that woodpile who's boss, or powering through the leaves, there's a reason people say, if Fleet Farm doesn't have it, I don't need it. Because we have it all. Fleet Farm, you won't believe what you'll find. Hey, Pitts, you and I have been fishing together a long time. That was a tough trip. Oh, that was a really tough trip. Hey, got to congratulate, though, your grandson, Andrew. Take a look at this smallmouth he caught. And he is really into fishing, oh, isn't he's he? Caught, yeah, he's my fishing partner up on White Sand Lake. Nice bass there, Andrew. And folks, that is our show for today. Please join us next week. I don't know we're going to fish yet, but we'll find a place somewhere. Until then, I'm John Gillespie, hoping to see you enjoying John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. Hey, hey!